The next Post Game Show is presented by Tri-State Audi. Visit your Tri-State area Audi dealer today. Jalen Brunson again out with that injured right hand. Emmanuel quickly starting a career high 40 for Emmanuel quickly. Mitchell Robinson key, especially in the third quarter with his defense. And quickly the Knicks explode in the second half, outscoring the Rockets 71-54 in the final 24 minutes. And the Knicks win 137-115. to Great to have you with us from our Delta MSG studios. Bill Pito along with Alan Hahn. Wally Zerbiak is here. He helped call the game on the MSG radio network. Great hustle by Wally. Mm. Getting over here for the start of the postgame show. Nice. Much needed win for the Knicks to snap that three-game losing record. streak. I got my steps in <laughs> all the job. way down the stairwell, all the way down 31st Street. No, what a performance by these Knicks. All Emmanuel quickly. Huge the way he set the tone in the first quarter. Julius Randle, another big-time performance. I think that shot that Julius Randle hit at the end of the third quarter was a big momentum uh, kind of shifter into that fourth quarter, and then that second unit was awesome. Obi Toppin got to see the ball go through the basket. Quentin Grimes lit it up from three. And the Rockets, you always say it, they let go of the rope. Yeah. I mean, they let go of the rope in that fourth quarter. Coach Silas was very frustrated with the effort. They were completely uh, not on the same page offensively, turning the ball over not getting back on defense and the Knicks did what they should do. They stepped on their throat feel good game. They were on a three game losing streak. You don't feel bad for anyone in this league. You get wins when you can and you send a message and they did that. Curious Wally, can you know, you know who you're playing against and you understand alright well it's, it's not a very good team. They're in a back to back on the road. Young team but when you're going through I think Tom Thibodeau said on, on, on Thursday like we're out of sorts. Mm -hmm. Right? He said that they had a couple of days off, and then you have a game like this where, as you said, like OBC's sees the ball going. You see guys just find their rhythm again. Can you get right in a game like this, despite the fact that, you know, well, it was, it's not like it's against a high-quality opponent, but can you get right with a game like this? Yes, you can. Uh, you, you snapped the three-game losing streak. There were pockets in that game, especially the first half, and starters against starters where Houston was competing yes. with the Knicks, and mm -hmm. that was a little bit alarming. There was They scored 60-plus you know, points in the first half, so the Knicks' defense was still a little bit of an issue, but they seemed to have found something in that fourth quarter and also in the third quarter, but it's going to be a completely different ball game. My dad taught me every game starts at zero. You got the Miami Heat coming into your building in the biggest game of the year on Wednesday. Let's see what the Knicks have. Keep in mind, the Heat also tomorrow night at Toronto. Yep. So for Miami, Wednesday will be the second of a back-to-back. -back. Here's our game summary. You had the 40 from Quickly, Julius Randle 26, R.J. Barrett 19. And note the assists, a season-high 35 for the Knicks. Quinton Grimes, all 14 of his points, came in the second half. We're now joined by Quentin Grimes. Quentin, thank you for joining us. Congrats on the win. You guys completely dominated the second half. What was the difference between the second half and the first half? Oh, we came out with a sense of urgency in the second half. I feel like the first half we were kind of like a days ago a little bit with our rotation defensively and stuff like that. But I feel like in the second half, we came out with a sense of urgency and kind of wanted to make sure they felt this in the first four minutes. Now, quickly, as talked about, a couple of the players are talking about getting that break in the schedule after the road trip to Florida, having those couple of days off. You were red hot. I'm sure you probably were like, I don't want to take a day off. I'm feeling it. But how important was just getting those three days where you can decompress and then just get back to it tonight? Yeah, being in my second year, I kind of know you kind of got to take, take days off. and got to rest days are sometimes more important than going in and get your work in. So I know the last two days kind of really helped us all kind of just kind of decompress and kind of reset coming into this, this week. Well, I know we got a, a tough few games that we should be able to get this week for sure. Yeah, obviously that is the schedule. Every game matters now at this point as you're trying to lock down a playoff berth. But let's just talk about, if you could, the next game up, which is the Miami Heat once again. The importance of getting the season series against them so there's no tiebreaker situation just in case the season finishes in a tie with them. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, the, the game down there was kind of high intensity, kind of physical. They said it was more like a playoff game. So I know coming in on Wednesday is going to be one of the biggest games for us and for them as well. So we had to come in with a chip on our shoulder coming into the game on Wednesday. All right, Quentin, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Congrats on the win. We'll see you on Wednesday night. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, guys, so Grimes had back-to-back -back games with at least 20. Tonight he went for 14. And let's get back, Wally, to quickly. When he starts before tonight, 16 starts averaging 20 a game. He doubled that up, career high 40. Also, nine assists, which is his second high total for the year. He was phenomenal tonight. He really was. And he started, he set the tone early against the Rockets. This Rockets team is not a good defensive team. They don't have a rim protector. He did not settle for the three point shot. He got into the paint and got whatever he wanted in that first quarter. And that's what sets up your three ball to go down. 14 for 18 from the field. 
What an outstanding performance. He took great shots. Maybe 14 for 17. Sorry. I, sorry, quick. And five for seven from that three-point line. I mean, just outstanding execution. This is a team, the Rockets, that, you know, they're ready for the season to end. We know all about that. That's been, you know, that happens sometimes with teams. And quickly took advantage. This is a Knicks team that needed this win. They have lofty goals for playoff positioning. And this is what you do. Get right game. Helps your numbers, helps your confidence. Really big time performance by Emmanuel quickly. And it's great to have him playing at this level when Jalen Brunson is not in the lineup. Yeah, and he kind of replicated some of what Jalen Brunson has been Absolutely. doing, getting into the paint. The footwork for quickly just gets better and better as the season goes on. And as we talked about in the pregame, is that for quick, he'd had that great game in Boston. He still had a couple of other good performances, but of the most part since that game in Boston, he hit a bit of a wall, and the shooting percentages were going down. His last four games, he was only 6 for 26 from three-point range. In this game, 5 for 7. Once he hit, like, an early three, you can see it. It's amazing with some shooters oh, yeah. is that that first one goes in. Okay, and now I'm in rhythm. Like, mm -hmm. one shot has to go in, and they're in rhythm. And he had that rhythm going early. All right, so the standings now. Knicks 2.5 in front of the Nets. 2.5 mm -hmm. in front of the Heat for the race for a top six spot. Right now, the Knicks are fifth. And again, the Heat tomorrow night at Toronto and Wednesday night, they will be here. Of note here, guys, and it's really important to point out, if Miami wins Wednesday and the Knicks and the Heat split the season series, the next tiebreaker is division title potential for the Heat, and they're looking good to win the division title. So if the Knicks lose Wednesday, very likely that the Heat will own the tiebreaker. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's how it's going to play out, which is obviously what makes the head-to-head -head so important. That's why I said the Knicks control their destiny when it comes to the standings, because they continue to win, they will take care. They don't have to have someone else lose for them to get what they want, which is that fifth spot. So they get closer with a win tonight, and now every game matters. And as Wally said, that's another playoff-type atmosphere game at the Garden against a rival. I can't wait for that night. It's going to be great. Now, Wally, you look at the box score. Mitchell Robinson's numbers don't exactly stand out, but what he did in the third quarter was key. Three blocks, yeah. and it seemed like he energized the team, changed the whole momentum of what was going on after the first half. Absolutely, and they need his presence defensively. Um, you know, when Mitchell Robinson isn't engaged, rebounding the basketball and just creating havoc, it, he just, it, the defense is not the same. You know, there he gets involved, quickly gets into the paint, gets in that little lob. Mm. Look at how easily he just erases people who think they have lamps. That was the block of the year. I mean, that's Jabari Smith. That's a rookie showing his youth. Just give me that ball, snatches it out of his, out of his hands. And then get that weak stuff out of here. Mitchell Robinson's <laughs> presence, his long arms, just controlling the paint. That's what he has to do. Get back to having that mojo, that swag, that dominance against a team like this that has no answer for his presence and his size in the middle. That was big time in the second half. Alan, was that a block or a steal? When I mean, he went down. That was block. a block. <laughs> Well, that was an erasing. That's an E in the box score for yes. a race. A race. <laughs> it's something erase. like that. But, you know, you mentioned it in the first half, the Rockets had 61 points. They were getting into yeah. the paint. They were scoring. And something had to change because right. the Nick defense just has not been good of late. And it just felt like Mitchell Robinson took it upon himself. Mm -hmm. I can affect the defense. Yep. I'm not letting them get easy baskets. I'm going to intimidate them. He went out and did that. And you were in the building calling the game. Yeah. The building got loud, loud because we love defense, yeah. and he was doing that, and that really, I thought, woke the team up. I yes. thought it just, his impact defensively in early third quarter, mm -hmm. I thought just woke the game up, changed the game, and suddenly the Knicks looked like the Knicks again. No question. And you can tell, Tom Thibodeau wants the Knicks to play defense like that, and when the Knicks do, that's when the crowd gets energized. Yeah. There was a wave going on around and around and around <laughs> the garden. I've never seen anything like it. It was, an, it was an electric atmosphere in there, and it was a good feel-good win for this Knicks team.